In this video, I wanted to show you apps that I use on my Mac and my PC on a regular basis that help me get things done productively. I've grouped these apps into categories of utility, software engineering, project management and collaboration, administrative, communication, and finally, audio and video. Hello everyone, my name is Utsav and I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about demystifying and simplifying the process of becoming an effective and a productive software engineer. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. And as usual, this video has timestamps, so feel free to jump around or skip to the sections that interest you. Also, links to related videos and reference material will be in the description below. All right, let's get started. I use this app called Alfred on my Mac that basically replaces the default spotlight. Once you give Alfred the permissions to access your folder structure and some other things, it really becomes spotlight on steroids. And I find that it helps me get a lot of things done without taking my hands off the keyboard, which really speeds things up. On Windows, I use the default search feature from the start menu. I think it already does a decent job at searching for files, opening applications, or searching on the browser and things like that. The next app I use is LastPass, which is a password manager that securely stores and fills my passwords without me having to worry about remembering any of them. It also has the ability to generate random secure passwords so that every time I need to create a new one, I can just use the app to create a new password and then it will also update that and save that accordingly. It even has a feature to periodically go and automatically change my password so I don't have to even worry about that. The next couple of utility apps I use are for screen management. On my Mac, I use an app called Spectacle, which basically lets me rearrange my windows on multiple different orientations. If there's one thing that I don't like about the Mac is how the windows management is very touchpad first. Uh, while I agree that the Mac touchpad is one of the best and probably as good as it can get, I really dislike using the trackpad or the mouse over a keyboard because I find it slower and it's also not very ergonomic. So using spectacle really works out for me because I can just quickly split out screens on multiple different configurations that I've already created and especially if you use an ultra wide screen like I do this becomes a must have. On the PC side I use an app called Display Fusion Pro which basically does the exact same thing only on Windows. Even though Windows already has pretty decent snapping feature, I find the orientation pretty limited. So Display Fusion lets me create a lot of different orientations that helps me manage my windows better. The app can do a lot of different customizations, but I primarily use it for window management. I use Visual Studio Code as my default code editor. I love the fact that it's lightweight, customizable, themable, and things like that. I actually have an entire video where I show how I set up and customize my VS Code. So if you want to, please check it out. So one of the funny things in that video is that I keep calling VS Code an IDE and a lot of people made fun of me for calling a code editor an IDE. So here's the thing. Branding aside, you can use VS Code to edit code, compile code, and debug code. So why can't it be called an IDE? Isn't that the very definition of what an IDE does? Let me know in the comments below why you think VS Code can or cannot be an IDE. But either way, I use VS Code for mostly front-end stuff and for all my back-end stuff, I use Visual Studio Enterprise. I generally work a lot on cloud-based backends and microservices on Azure and I find that Visual Studio Enterprise works really well for that. And finally, I briefly wanted to talk about the terminal. I used to use this app called iTerm2 for my Mac terminal, uh, but these days I just use the default one. But for Windows, I use Console Emulator or ConEMU. It's very themable, customizable, and has a lot of different settings. From the same window, you can quickly launch Bash, Command Prompt, PowerShell, and things like that. So it's really useful and saves you a lot of time. So I read a lot of books and I also need to do a lot of research to create videos for this channel. And when I'm working on projects, I also like to scribble down my ideas and user stories by hand because I find that taking notes is a good first step in aggregating different ideas before converting them to different formats. For that, I use Notability. That's my app of choice to take notes on the iPad. And those of you that have watched my problem solving videos, you've probably seen me scribble down on my iPad. That's the app I use. For every other task, project management, or collaboration needs, I use an app called Taskade, who are also kind enough to sponsor this video. Taskit is a free app that drastically streamlines the process of planning, organizing, and decision-making in your projects. A few months ago, John, the CEO of Taskit, reached out to me urging me to try out Taskit, and I was blown away. Here, I'll quickly give you an overview. So this exact video that you're watching right now was fully planned and created on Taskit. 
The main idea with Taskit is cascading tasks, hence the name Taskit. So for this video, I started off with a vague concept on the mind map view. That's where I jot down high level ideas I want to cover in this video. Then I keep drilling down until I have a solid script for each section with a checkbox for all the assets I need to collect for that section. Each section of the mind map can also be treated as an independent unit. This is easier to visualize in the action view. I can also switch to the board view and track the overall progress of the project. And finally, if I want to see the whole thing at one place, I can switch to the list view. I can assign due dates, add tags, and invite others to collaborate. I can start a common thread on literally any unit or start a video meeting with any collaborators just with one button click. It's literally Notion, Trello, and Slack combined into one modern and seamless app. But as you can see, you don't have to use Taskit just as a project management tool. You can use it to take notes, keep track of your tasks or ideas, or get creative with how you use it because there are countless ways you can represent your content within Taskit. You can try out Taskit from the link below and the first thousand of my subscribers to join Taskit via the link below will automatically get upgraded to the premium version where you will get unlimited storage, templates, file sharing, and much more. I still find that I need to write documents here and there. So for things like that, I use Microsoft Word. I could use Google Docs for that, but I already have a subscription to Microsoft Office. One of the best parts of having worked at Microsoft is that as an alumni, you retain a lot of the perks like heavily discounted software, hardware, subscription, so on and so forth. So I find that the Office subscription works well for me, and I think it's also a more mature product. For email and calendar, I use Outlook. Same reasoning here, I already have the subscription. And I also feel that Outlook gives you much more control over your email and calendar settings. For general web browsing, I use Microsoft Edge. I like how they are constantly adding new features to improve the browsing experience without sacrificing performance or compromising privacy. Just a disclaimer, I used to work for Edge, so I also want to support my old team because they were all really awesome people to work with. But before you start a browser war in the comments below, please save your energy. All modern browsers are pretty great. Whether you use Chrome or Edge, Safari, Firefox, Brave, or whatever that may be for you, they're all great. We can to be friends, let's move on. For communication, it's all pretty standard stuff, so I'm gonna go through pretty fast. For messaging, I use iMessage because I do own a couple of Apple products, especially the iPhone, and I find that iMessage works really well on my Mac, so I can use the keyboard to respond to messages instead of typing it on my phone. For connecting with my friends and family, I use Facebook Messenger because that's where all of them are, and that's what I use to get a hold of them. For video communications, I use Zoom. That's how I hold all my mock interviews and mentorship sessions as well. You guys know what Zoom is, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it. And finally, I use Discord and Instagram to hang out and communicate with you guys, uh, even though Instagram is not really an app on my computer, but whatever. For music recording and production, I use Logic Pro 10. I've tried Ableton Live, Audition, Reaper. They're all great apps, but I've really come to like the simplicity of Logic Pro. I'm still using the trial version and I'm not sure if I will purchase it yet, but so far, it looks good. For editing all my videos, I use Premiere Pro. I know that a lot of people like Final Cut as well, and I've heard great things about it, but I just try to refrain from using products that are limited to only one platform. That's one of the reasons why I use Adobe Creative Suite, because I'm not limited to just one platform. For editing the audio on my videos, I use Audition, uh, and because I already use Premiere Pro, it links seamlessly with Audition so I can go back and forth without much issues. For photo editing, creating thumbnails and things like that, I use either Lightroom Classic or a new app called Luminar AI, which uses artificial intelligence to help you edit photos faster. It works most of the times, uh, and it's really good when it works, but as with anything AI, sometimes it doesn't work. But overall, I think it has saved me time on editing photos for sure. And finally, for all my screen capture and recording, I use OBS Studio. I think it's a mature product, works well. Um, there's not much else to say about it. So yeah, those are the apps I use on a regular basis. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, comment, share, and subscribe. And while you're here, please check out these videos that I think you'll enjoy as well. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.